one is to drive motors if you're developing a robot for like a first competition or a robotics club. Uh, you can also add Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that to this. And they stack up and it works great and a lot of people love it. But again, the size of it is a little difficult for certain applications, which is why we did a miniature one. But again, the idea was the same tools that people are used to could be used with, with our system. So this is our tiny Duino system. We also, also have a coin cell holder around here for battery powered applications. This has three expansion shields uh, stacked on top of it. So I'll, I'll pass this around. We've also got uh, some other stuff I'll pass around as well. I'll look at these. So this was kind of our idea. And this is a picture of the, the main tiny Duino as we call it. So our goal for this project was to make it much smaller. And it's got tiny in the title, so we kind of had to do that. Um, also really targeted for low power applications, which is why we put the optional battery coin cell connector on there. And so, uh, so you could actually do a, a wireless type application or a low power application that, you know, with the standard Arduino, you might need a big power supply for or a big battery. Uh, the other thing is we kind of stripped out everything that was, wasn't needed and put those on expansion seals. So in the case of standard Arduino, it has USB built in, which is typically used for programming the device. But once you program it, that USB is still there and it's adding roughly $5 to $10 of cost to that device. And so if you want to deploy a number of these, you could just go with the main processor board and, and take the USB off when you're done programming it. So again, we're trying to minimize the cost for these sort of applications where you actually want to put it out somewhere. And then we offered the same expandability of the standard Arduino. So it's got the same signal support, obviously a much smaller connector. Uh, so we can add uh, sensor boards. Right there, there's an LED board, a USB board, and just a prototyping board. It breaks out all the signals. But in development, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, some other ones like that. And it's really perfect for making things. Uh, first discuss the concept about a year and a half ago at Synhack, which is the Akron Hackerspace. It's actually one of their first meetings when they got together. I kind of discussed the topic with some people, maybe G. I know I talked with Trevor and a couple other guys. Yep. And um, so that was really just to uh, just kind of explain the thoughts I had about this, and I got great feedback from them. So I actually went ahead, invested, and, and developed some prototypes, which were shown off to some of the Akron Digital Group guys, and there's yep. some of them here, Rick and Grover. And uh, three revisions later, and we actually had 15 boards, and some of them are there, we decided to launch a Kickstarter campaign. Um, the reasoning for that was, if you're familiar with Kickstarter, it's a crowdfunding site where you go up and put a project in a goal number, and people can really pledge against your, your project in, really to get some reward back, which in our case was really just product. So they put up $25 and they got a certain reward level back, which was uh, a couple of the tiny boards, or they pledged $100 and they got a different set of boards. Um, the advantage to them is if you don't meet your goal, they get their money back. So it's really kind of risk-free from their standpoint. So last September, we launched on Kickstarter. Uh, the goal was to raise $10,000 over 30 days. Um, next thing is a video which won't work. Get past that. <laughs> so within three days, we hit the goal of ten thousand dollars. So that, that was a good day. Uh, after thirty days, we raised what one hundred nine thousand, and we're kind of hoping. I mean, the ten thousand dollars is kind of a, a base level that we could produce the boards, but we're really hoping to hit over ten thousand or one hundred k, because at, at that goal, we kind of put a stretch goal out there that we were going to actually manufacture all the boards in accurate which a lot of electronic companies, as you're aware, might ship manufacturing overseas or to contract manufacturer. And our long-term plan was always to do manufacturing in-house, locally, and that actually has some benefits for kind of our long-term plan. But this enabled us to do that. So we were also awarded from Postscape, which is an Internet of Things website that we were awarded a Project of the Year for open source projects last year. 
And they said it was for low cost openness and acting as a catalyst for a new type of connected project. And so this, this success let me move out of my house. I had everything set up in the bedroom, I was soldering, it kind of sucks. Um, we moved into a 3,000 square foot facility in Akron, which is actually in the Canal Place complex, which is the old BF Goodrich rubber plant. And so, if you're familiar with the Akron Incubator, it's, it's there, or the Global Business Accelerator. Um, we're actually over in the industrial side of the complex, and so it's, it's a pretty cool <coughs> facility and low cost, which is why we like it. So here's kind of a, an old school view of it. It actually looks a little bit different. Some of those buildings are gone. But at one point, it was the largest rubber factory in the world. And we're kind of way over there on that one side. Uh, so, you know, there we are, 457. Um, we, again, we're, we're manufacturing electronics. So we actually got an entire SMT manufacturing line in-house. Bought it used. This is a 15 foot long, about two ton reflow oven, arrived on the semi. And actually we had to take it the other side of the building, a long story, didn't fit in the elevator. Um, there it is kind of in the space. Um, if you've seen it, it actually is a little bit bigger than that. I don't have to say that pictures don't really do it justice, the thing is kind of a beast. We also have a pick and place machine. So, robotically picks up using vacuum the components that are on those boards going around so it can do 04 or 2 size components. It actually can do smaller than that as well. Um, here's me for a, a photo shoot. And this is kind of everything set up. You can see there, there's some boards down in that area assembled. All those boards that are getting passed around, we actually build on panels. And so typically there's about 36 boards on there. For some of the smaller boards, it's more like 50. So we build them panel by panel. Um, and actually, I don't know if this video will work. Here's one of our guys, Alex, it's assembling stuff. I saw Andy walked in back there, he's helping us out a lot too. And that video won't work. But if you want to go to our website, there is a video of kind of the production line. It's a little grainy and not so great because I did it on my, my phone. Um, anyway, so what's next for us, Tiny Circuits? We did a successful Kickstarter. Uh, we've developed all these boards and we're shipping things out now for our Kickstarter backers. But you know, what are the possibilities? We actually have about 50 different boards in development or ideas for boards that we want to make in the next few months. Um, and a lot of these kind of factor in the whole Internet of Things world. Wi-Fi, that's actually part of our Kickstarter. We're coming out with Wi-Fi boards. So again, you can stack that on there. The idea of all these boards and the whole Arduino concept is to make these extremely easy to use. So instead of having to have a master's in computer science and worry about TCP IP stack and stuff, we're trying to abstract as much of that as possible so you as a maker or you as a product developer somewhere can easily add Wi-Fi or any one of these other technologies to a device in your product and do it rapidly and not worry about all the low-level details that really you don't need to worry about. A number of sensors, obviously for any of things, sensing is a huge deal. So things like accelerometers, uh, I am used for flight things, um, certainly temperature, pressure, all sorts of different sensor options. Bluetooth low energy, and you'll find this on iPhone 4S and iPhone 5 supports Bluetooth low energy. And this is probably familiar with Bluetooth, but this allows you to run Bluetooth off a coin cell. It's actually a little bit different than Bluetooth, but you'll see it's becoming really popular among uh, sensor developers. And actually there's the uh, healthcare movement, I think, of standardized on Bluetooth Low Energy for connecting you know, things like heart rate sensors to, to different devices. Motor control, we do have, there is, being passed around in one of those little pink bags, there is a motor controller that can do 1.8 amps at 11 volts in a very small form factor. Uh, heat might be an issue at that. But then we also have a, a tiny shield coming out which has four of those, and so if you're developing a small robot, with small DC motors, you can easily drive that using this platform, as opposed to a standard Arduino, which tends to be fairly bulky and big, and kind of limits what you can do size-wise. Ethernet, wired Ethernet, 802.15.4, again, this is kind of the Zigbee radio, if you've heard of those, again, low power type radio. GPS, which we see as being really big, so again, a GPS module that can plug in there so you can get location data wherever you are. 
and then ideally plug Wi-Fi or something on top of that, or perhaps a cellular connection, GSM, a GPRS, back to, um, again, if you go back to the logistics type system, if you're cracking a trucking fleet, GPS, cellular module, and now you've developed your own you know, tracker device. Uh, standard Bluetooth. And then you know, we've kind of targeted Arduino initially, but there's no reason this platform couldn't be used with other targets as well. So MSP430s from TI are really popular for wireless sensor people. They're very low-power processors. Um, and then for higher-end applications, certainly like ARM and some other higher-end processors. The latest Arduino is going ARM, the Cortex. It's a 32-bit platform. I'm not using the phone. And again, the, the goal is to make these all very easy to add to your projects, to kind of take that complexity away, make it as easy as possible, make it as modular as possible. And you know, not only for hobbyists, you know, that's kind of the Arduino community is more the hobbyist, you know, might do a, a little project at home. But the other nice thing is a number of people are using Arduino for actual products where they might be buying 50 or 100 Arduinos, putting them in some products. Um, but now with this, you can have the same you know, basic tool chain and target much smaller things or cheaper things. And so through the use of some of these modules, we really see a business opportunity there. And I think that's it. So you're certainly welcome to come down to Akron. We always have people in there. Rick is in there a couple times a week, usually helping out. And, uh, Give tours whenever you want. Come down and see the assembly line, see what we're doing. And uh, thanks for listening to me. And if you got any questions, let's talk. So, uh, what are your target prices for individual pieces in the quantity? Um, well, it depends on the particular board. The main yeah. tiny Duino. A standard Arduino is around 30 bucks. Most places have like 27, 28. We're selling ours for 19.95. It's in increased quantities. Um, but then again, to program it, you have to add USB to it. So if you look at apples to apples, it's actually more because USB is like 17 bucks. Um, but then again, in volume, it's basically a 10% cut every order of 10. So if you order 10 of them, you get 10% cut. Order 100, you get 20% off. Uh, and then above that is kind of quoted pricing. But then we also have, if you're familiar with the, the lily pad, and actually you kind of see it up there, it's the size of a dime. And it actually has the same processor as a standard Arduino. And there's something known as an Arduino lily pad that's really big in the e-textile world. So people will sew this into clothing, light LEDs, or do a variety of different things. And so we kind of developed a very small one of those. And again, it's in one of those bags that's going around. It's the size of a dime. But we're selling that for $9.95 in single piece quantities. So if you just need to wire up to a few IOs, you can easily use something like that. And that's really about as bare bones as you can get. It's got a connector on there for USB programming, uh, the micro and a couple decoupling and bulb caps, and that's about it. Are you, are you, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, are you approaching a, taking the same approach with that where you can stack things together and the intention is? No, that one you can't stack. Uh, again, that was meant to be as bare bones as possible. Okay. So if you see those, it's kind of those gold holes around the outside. Yeah, yeah. Those are what are known as sew tabs, but you can certainly, you don't have to sew into them. You can just wire them up to anything. That is, especially an immersion gold around there, so you can solder to any of those connections. But no, you can't stack. Uh, congratulations on your successful Kickstarter campaign. If I'm not wrong, I think yours might be possibly the most successful in terms of going past your original goal. Well, no, there's a lot more. <laughs> yeah. There's others that have, have done better than 10 times a roll. Right. Okay, thanks. But uh, so how, what is, what, what's the key to having such a successful Kickstarter campaign? I think a lot of it was in kind of the market that we're going <coughs> after or the type of people that go on Kickstarter. And so you'll see a lot of open source or even just hardware projects on there. There's a lot of 3D printer projects on there. I know maybe your friends here. Um, and then there's, almost every week there's a different Arduino type clone. And so there was that fear that we'd be labeled in or kind of categorized with, with all those. Um, and there's been some that have been much more successful than us. There's a small one called the Digispark, which is really just 
It's kind of like that small one there. It just has USB almost built into it. Very low cost, just has a couple IOs. His goal was 5K. He raised 312. So in terms of, he, he actually quite blew us away. Uh, yeah, what's going on? Uh, other than your original Kickstarter stakeholder slash, as I understand it, people, the way you set your Kickstarter up is that the people who kick in either 25 or 100 were going to get a little something back when you started manufacturing, right? So other than those people, are you have you found customers that you you know that are keeping you growing in terms of uh, your manufacturing? Yes, we're kind of in uh, almost a purgatory state right now where we're still manufacturing the Kickstarter orders. Uh -huh. And because of that, we haven't, and this is our choice, we haven't chosen to take any more outside orders, um, simply because we have a certain commitment to those backers to deliver on what we said and not get distracted. We've already delayed shipments. So there's some backers in here that are asking about when they're gonna get their stuff. And we, are <laughs> we are shipping right now, but um, you know, we really wanna fulfill those orders as much as we can before we launch a web store. But but to that that means we have, you know, through our website we've set up a mailing list so people can sign up to be alerted when the store becomes available and certainly other people are asking almost daily how they can buy stuff. Do you see your products fitting into another manufacturer's process to the extent that they would want to integrate your product into their, you know, as a component of their larger product? Well that's certainly the goal. And again, from a business standpoint, this is kind of the initial product line, which is targeted towards hobbyists. We certainly have a different vision as we're targeting businesses. It's a different um, you know, sales chain, distributor chain. We have to deal with, obviously, the documentation level is quite a bit different, and their requirements would be quite a bit different. So I guess from a commercial standpoint, if you look at like a, a, a module vendor today, like a Bluetooth module vendor, uh, longer term, if we were to get in that market, we'd kind of go that approach. So instead of this sort of thing that has a connector on that stacks, we'd probably target something more, even lower cost, that could be easily embedded into a, a device. So for right now, though, it's the same as the Raspberry market. You're looking at the obvious. Yes. Even beyond your original uh, Kickstarter statement. Uh, oh, there's, there's no reason you couldn't embed it into a product. But it's not specifically geared for that right now. But over the next year or two, it's certainly the goal is to kind of migrate towards commercial buyers. Yeah? So, manufacturing in Akron, um, and you just got started recently, how quickly, or how many can you produce a day? Um, of those, the nice thing is the, the production machine we have, we have is, is 